this episode was crazy enough, we're going to forego the intro. I don't know about you, but get out of here. I don't know about you guys, but there was so much crazy in this episode that it really doesn't matter where we start. Uh, first off, my predictions were way off. Uh, did anybody else have Alligator Loki as the funniest and best Loki in the entire episode? I don't really know what Mobius was thinking when he said that Sylvie is his favorite. That alligator was the most fun thing in that entire episode. Uh, and that's pretty hard to do considering how crazy the entire episode was. Um, I can see why Tom Hiddleston thought that this episode and episode four were some of his favorite ones. Uh, and I suppose since everything happens in the void at the end of time, you can have crazy lines like, I killed Thor, and nobody bats an eye at it. Um, that's about all I've got. Shortest episode ever. So, have fun. Uh, tell us what you think, and uh, watch our Easter egg video, and I'm just kidding. There was a lot of really awesome stuff in this episode. Uh, I, I can't say that I'm too upset that we got a cliffhanger at the end uh, and we don't get to find out exactly who is on the other side of Eliath. Um, speaking of Eliath, if you do a quick Google search of uh, characters in the Marvel comic verse, uh, you will find that Eliath is indeed a Tempest Beast. Uh, there's a lot more to Eliath, and I think some people might be upset that Eliath gets... Um, gets relegated to a smaller character. Um, maybe we'll see that character more again later, uh, but in the comics it's a pretty formidable character um, and it's it was just used in a very small way here. However, uh, it has a lot of ties to Ravona, has a lot of ties to Kang, and so seeing as how we're going to get Kang the Conqueror later on, I think that was a pretty cool connection there to make without kind of spoiling some stuff later. It's going to be interesting to see who is in the castle uh, that they see at the end of episode five. Uh, is it Kang? Is it someone else? Um, for a second there, I thought Ravona and Sylvie were going to kind of team up. Uh, and I thought it was very telling that Ravona was the one that was intending to stab Sylvie in the back. The Lokis in this episode, with the exception of politician Loki and boastful Loki, uh, were actually the trustworthy characters in this episode. So I thought that was an interesting twist. And the episode told you it was going to be twisty right off the bat with the camera angle flipping on its head uh, as the episode starts. So it starts off right where episode four ended with everything that, that happened and what's going on, but it lets you know with that flip that things are not going to be uh, what you think they are. And... Again, just story-wise, because everything happens in this, this junk world at the end of time, because it's this TVA version of an apocalypse event, uh, they can do and say whatever they want to say. They can have crazy Loki battles with different powers, and they can have all these different things connect, uh, and they can throw in all kinds of weird, goofy elements uh, that make sense and don't make sense. Uh, and it doesn't really matter because it can be canon in the MCU, but it can be weird and crazy at the end here because it doesn't have to make sense. It's just all these different timelines coming together. Uh, I really hope that all the multiverse uh, things explode, uh, but this was, the, this was the spot in the universe where all the multiverses, all the pruned pieces came together. So you got to see the effects of the multiverse war all in one universe and I'm wondering if we're going to get the flip side of that later on uh, in episode six but like I said in some of the predictions we've been given enough examples and enough story and enough dialogue about what pruning is and what the multiverse is and all those different things that when you saw everything come together as weird as it was it all kind of made sense it was okay well these are different multiverses and these are different universes and they're all in the same place and it 
it wasn't as twisty as I thought it would be, although I think, I'm hoping, we're gonna get some time jumps maybe in episode six. It will be interesting if we go through this entire series without a lot of flips and twistiness and jumping back and, and throwing things in reverse or back on their head. It's gonna be weird, especially since we saw Mobius leave before the battle starts and we get, we're gonna get his side of it in episode six. W what happens when he goes back to the TVA to face off against Ravona? What happens there when Ravona finds out what's going on? Uh, is Miss Minutes involved? And what happens with Loki and Sylvie on the other side of uh, Eliath? Um, is it a real thing? Is it a doorway? Is it a memory that they've, uh, that they've opened up? I, who knows? Um, the last three episodes are very, very exciting. Uh, and episode five is definitely up there in terms of favorite episodes, but I don't know how you rank it because it was so awkward. Um, there were a ton of Easter eggs in this video, and it's going to be really hard for me to pare this down to 10 Easter eggs in our Easter egg video. I may have to double a few up. Um, everything from, you know, what were the weird dodo bird looking things because they didn't look like they have connected heads to what looked like uh, the Dark Aster ship from Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, there is a uh, an old abandoned barbershop that the Lokis and Mobius uh, take shelter in while they're warming up before their big battle. There uh, are different games and things in the Loki hideout, which is an old bowling alley. Uh, there is a, a video game that says Space Mission. It's a, a, a pinball machine game. There is another one that says Polybius, which is a... Uh, Roman, Greek, Roman uh, guy from the past that comes up with ciphers and all kinds of weird things. So they threw a ton of stuff in here um, where they could just play in this episode. And it was really, really awesome. Uh, here's my hat tip to Marvel for one, throwing in scenes from a later episode in their early trailer material, but also showing us a variant Loki uh, in the form of the politician Loki, but not actually realizing that it was a variant version of Loki. Um, and I'm sure Loki getting his hand cut off is uh, somewhere in the uh, Marvel comic verse, uh, even though it does happen uh, in Thor The Dark World. So um, you got a little throwback there and a little twist on those things there, but uh, it was an interesting take on it. Uh, and if anybody was quick-eyed enough to see Mini Thor and uh, Mjolnir buried in the dirt, uh, hats off to you guys as well there. That was a fun one as well, and I'm, I can't wait to dig into all those Easter eggs. This was a fun standalone episode. And I, 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 you got a lot of plot development. You got a lot of really cool stuff uh, character-wise as well in this crazy environment. But it just it just moved the plot forward to the finale. and and. I don't think, for me, there's not enough there to kind of go through what does it mean for these characters and what does it mean for this because you got a lot of that early on. Um, I, I think, I still think you could have done without episode three, although a lot of people disagree with me. Uh, I did love the dialogue heavy section between Sylvie and Loki uh, where they share the blanket uh, and they learn how to uh, deal with things together. I also loved the fan service moment with classic Loki when, when our version of Loki is asking all of these other Lokis where they came from and what happened in their timelines and who they were and what they did. Um, that boastful Loki is making things up and the alligator is calling him out on it. Uh, I was kind of hoping the alligator would talk, but I love even more that the other ones have to translate for him because they can understand him. Uh, obviously, Kid Loki saying that he killed Thor uh, was crazy enough. Uh, besides the fact that he was in charge because they all respected him that much. I thought classic Loki was going to be more evil because that's a version that you see uh, in another comic strip, but I was kind of pleasantly surprised by the version of him that decided to live out his life uh, away from everybody because he realized that he was an agent of chaos. Uh, his was my favorite story simply because of the fan service in it, which is what I mentioned just a second ago, was that he did what everybody 
thought Loki did at the end of Endgame, uh, or at the beginning of Infinity War, I'm sorry, which was to cast a version of himself in front of Thanos uh, and hide or get away somehow. Everybody thought, oh, Loki's not really dead. He was just casting a, an illusion of himself and he's not really dead. Come to find out he was really dead, uh, but this version of Loki actually did cast a, a vision version of himself, an illusion version of himself, and he survived the attack on uh, the ship just like Thor did, and he chose to go to a different planet and live out his life uh, away from everybody. And so I thought that was a really cool fan service moment to say, hey, we heard you, and yeah, that's one possible way things happened, but it didn't happen in our standard timeline. So uh, another kind of tip of the hat to Marvel for just being able to work those things in and have fun with those. Uh, I don't know what you guys thought about this episode. I'd really like to get your comments because again, it was so much fun and it was so weird and so strange. Uh, there were so many things there to just say, oh, I love this and I love that. Probably won't be able to fit in all the Easter eggs and so I'm curious to see your comments on that as well. My predictions for episode six are going to be awful because what do you say other than it's going to wrap up? Uh, do I guess that it's Kang? Do I guess that Ravona helps out? What happens when the TVA goes down? What happens when the multiverse springs into existence? Or does that even happen in this episode, uh, in episode six? I, I have no idea. So I'm very curious to see what you guys think. I guess there's a little part of me that's saying, help me out, because I don't know. Um, I'm really excited to see where the show goes. Um, for the first time in, I guess this is our third series now, I have no idea what's going to happen at the end. You kind of got a little bit of telegraphing uh, at the end of WandaVision. You definitely got some telegraphing at the end of Falcon and the Winter Soldier to know, oh, we're going to get these different things. But with this, this one, I have no idea what's going to happen. And I'm really excited about that. Um, the only thing I'm really upset about is I have to wait six more days to find out. So, uh, other than that, I, I have very few notes that don't include the word Easter egg at the end of them, which means those are going to be saved for another video. Uh, and that means that our video uh, is just about done here. Uh, the moment at the end with Loki uh, being able to team up with Sylvie and them enchanting Aliyah together uh, was a really cool arc and a completion um, of the conversation that was had in episode three. But uh, I, I, that was a really great moment together, a connection together, and all of them saying that they were going to work this out together and be together and do these things together was a, for all of those Lokis, was a different character arc than you've seen in the entire MCU thus far was that they chose to work together. They chose to be there for each other and do things for one another. Um, and just seeing what they could do together, not to mention uh, classic Loki's glorious purpose moment at the end by creating Asgard from nothing uh, was really, really cool as well. Uh, in addition to Kid Loki creating an, what appears to be an illusion, but it is an actual sword that he gives to Loki. Um, and, and they, they allude to, hey, maybe we're more powerful than we think. Um, and all they're using their power for is these fun, goofy illusion type things when they could be doing so much more. So if that version of Loki survives into the future of the MCU, what does that version of Loki look like? And what would you even call that version of Loki? Is he, is he powerful Loki? Is he reformed Loki? What is he? So uh, tell us what you guys think. Uh, there was a whole lot of fun stuff in this episode, ton of Easter eggs. So again, please don't forget to check out our Easter egg video. As always, subscribe to our channel, uh, like our videos, share this video all across the multiverse, uh, and we will see you guys next time.